All right, looks like we're live. How's everybody doing out there today? We'll give it a few minutes before we break into this fair field on this wonderful Friday. Well, it's not wonderful because of the weather. It's actually a kind of nasty day outside today. Kind of cold and rainy down here in Georgia. So if anybody happens to hop in the stream, please let yourself be known in the chat. If you can chat, if you're at work, don't chat. <laughs> I don't want you getting in trouble at work. What's up, Phil guy? How you doing, bud? Hopefully you're having a good Friday. Phil guy, who you got on the uh, Super Bowl this weekend? Or who do you want to win the Super Bowl this weekend? Oh, you got a cold? No, oh, that sucks. You haven't been to China recently, have you? <laughs> Just kidding. It's a lot of uh, a lot of news about that coronavirus going around. You don't care about Super Bowl rush cheat. <laughs> uh, it's okay, man. It just you know sometimes you get the call, sometimes you don't. What's up, James Johnson? How you doing, bud? Welcome to the Friday Fairfield Fanatic stream. Um, usually I just record me opening a fair field on Fridays and, and upload it, but I figured, you know, what the heck, I'll go live and hang out, see who all jumps on, boycott the Super you can't boycott the Super Bowl, Super Bowl's gonna happen either way, Phil guy. Like me, I just, I'm, I'm like hoping for a good game, um, I kinda want the Chiefs to win, like kinda, like, I don't know. It's it's weird. See, I haven't liked the 49ers for uh, a long time. <laughs> and they were bad for a while there, but when they were good in the 80s, I did not like the 49ers. I didn't like Montana and Rice and Craig and Lott and all them people back on the 80s teams. Taylor. I was not a 49ers fan one bit. <laughs> Football season ended when LSU won the Super Bowl. So I see you're a, a, a one-team person, um, <laughs> feel guy. <laughs> you're hoping for a wardrobe malfunction at the halftime. <laughs> who's who's doing the halftime show? Who's doing the halftime show, James? Okay, Shakira and JLo. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm sure. Sure, a wardrobe malfunction will be well timed there. Oh, <laughs> uh, you met Montana? He's an a-hole. Well, I mean, I grew up in Florida, and you know, South Florida. Dan Marino was a god down there, as far as football is concerned. And from people that I've heard that met him, you know, I heard he's an a-hole too. I think I heard you tell that story, Phil Guy, about Montana. Okay, so he's playing a two lane. Breeze Goat. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, Phil Guy. I wouldn't go that far. But let's go ahead and get into this Fairfield, and uh, if anybody, if anybody hops in and. 
enjoys BSing with us. Yeah, I'm biased, Phil guy. I'm going to say Marino. <laughs> it was a totally different era. The rules nowadays sure make it very, very easy for the QBs to, uh, to throw the ball. It's, it's different errors, field guy. I mean, it's just different errors. I mean, you can't control what error a QB plays in, right? It's different errors. <laughs> it's, it's hard to complain QBs from different errors because the rules were so different. The uh, NFL now is a very pass-happy league. The rules definitely benefit the offenses, and, and, you know, I don't blame the NFL for doing it. You know, NFL's a business. They're trying to sell a product. Looks like we got a pack of Fleer Ultra in here. The last three cubes I've opened all had the same packs in them. <laughs> if Breeze went to the Dolphins instead of the Saints... Hold on, I got a notification blocking it. <laughs> you bet you wouldn't say he was the goat. Don't get me wrong, Bree. I I love Breeze, but you know, a lot of people get on the Dolphins about that decision of taking Culpepper over Breeze. What's up, Opeachy? Been a while since I saw you in a stream. How you doing, my friend? Yeah, the Dolphins took Culpepper and didn't, didn't go with uh, Breeze, and Culpepper was a giant flop, of course. But I don't blame them too much because, you know, you got two quarterbacks to pick from. Do you take the one with the leg injury or you take the one with the shoulder injury? And they should have taken the one with the shoulder injury, which was Breeze. But I'll definitely, I'll definitely consider Breeze as, I don't know if I can call him the greatest all-time of modern football. But, you know, he's up there, definitely. All right, let's get through this. Let me uh, turn my focus on so we can see what we're looking at here as far as the cards. Darnell Sweeney. You wanted Breeze. Culpepper was trash in Minnesota. Well, Culpepper had, uh, he had Moss. Here's a Schilling. I think Schilling's a future Hall of Famer. Here's a Mike Piazza Hall of Famer. From um, 99 Tops. Yeah, but I I was holding out hope that uh, Culpepper was going to do something while he was quarterback in Miami. But, you know, Miami doesn't do well with quarterbacks that aren't named Marino. You got a Roger Clemens Fleer. Got that same card. <laughs> Along with this same card, another pack. Mark McGuire checklist. Yeah, it was a nice piazza. So that's what we're hoping for in this Fairfield is Hall of Famers, of course. You're a Mets fan from Jersey. Are you a Dolphins fan, James? You a, you a Jets or Giants fan? Yo, Peachy, what's uh, Urban breaking tonight? He's a DJ LeMayhew with the Rockies. Brandon Finnegan, you're a Dolphins fan. Must be tough. Uh, do you live up in Jersey still? <laughs> tough being a Dolphins fan up there. Is a Correa. Andres Blanco, Jarrett Parker, your whole life. <laughs> Must be fun with the Jets fans. Juan Beniquez, Fleer, this is 86. Here's a Cleet Boyer, I got this exact same card in my last cube I opened. Uh, I don't remember what this was from. So we are cards, number six. This one's a little dinged up. Joe Pinheiro. He's a Mickey Rivers, 82. Pretty cool. Got a pit print mark right there on his wrist. Optic Mega, Bowman's Best. Oh, Optic Mega, Bowman's Best. And two other boxes. That's cool. Nice little mixer. Larry Anderson. Alvin Davis. 10 per. That's not bad. Rob Deere, the Offcut Expos leaders. 
We got Pete Incavilia, 88 Leaf, Ricky Horton, Salazar looking like he's in deep thought, Hall of Famer Larry Walker, there we go, Hall of Fame Canadian Larry Walker, I should say, since Opeachy's in the room, there's a Pat Sheridan, and a Luke Prokopek, Luke Prokopek, don't remember him, what's up 25 Perez, we just in here doing a cube right now. See what kind of cool stuff we get in here and throwing some BS around. I haven't seen Field Guy chatted. I, I hope I didn't uh, make Field Guy angry saying uh, Breeze wasn't the greatest of all time because I don't consider that to be so. Here's a 82 Fleer. Jerry Royster. Joe Morgan. Not the Joe Morgan I'm looking for. Mike Timlin. One of my least favorite sets, 88 Fleer, Bo Diaz, Kenny Maldonado, Billy Sample. It's a D. Gordon daddy, rated rookie. <laughs> Here you go, PG. We got a Jeff Cirillo. Brady, the most overrated QB ever. I give it to Brady, man. I mean, I do. Being a Dolphins fan is tough. I give props to I give props to Brady. Because he could turn it on when he's ready to. He can turn it on when he's ready to. And when, when Brady's throwing dimes, it's it's tough. It's tough. I can hate on him. Because he is a Patriot. But you know. He's not gonna put up the numbers, but he's gonna win you games. You know, that's that's the you know, the two what do you call them? two variables of quarterbacks you know a lot of people look at do you look at just pure numbers or do you look at you know being the field captain <laughs> when you're the refs turn it on uh i won't go that far <laughs> it's a great prior some nice old tops in here 80 tops they're not in terrible condition either he can't throw the ball more in 10 years actually he could throw it he, he could place it in there. Greatest set of all time. 93 flair. Not the greatest player, but the greatest set of all time. Yeah, he's a winner. I give him that. He's a Mickey Tettleton. 90 flair. Hey, look at this one. I've never seen this card before. The Legendary Years. Tommy Johns. Is this a chrome? What year is this? 2005. Pristine prominence. It's a cool card. Tommy John's not a Hall of Famer, but that's that's a pretty cool card. Never seen that before. He's a system QB. <laughs> the number one triggering words for any Patriots fan. He's a system QB. Uh, Bernard Gilkey. We got uh, Carl Willis and Jeff Kunkel. That card's a Kunkel. Yeah, I give him props. He, he he does what the Patriots needed him to do. Did what the Patriots needed him to do. Here's a Brent Knackert. Another card from the greatest set of all time. Joe Oliver. 93 Flair. Garoppolo was going to take his job. And he had him traded to the 4 year daughters. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Kirk Gibson, 91. Joe Ursulek. Jose Rio. Reggie Jefferson. Dan Schatzader. Steve Cummings traded. Sergio Valdez. Jerome Walton, the rookies. Dwight Evans. Usually every box of Fairfield has, uh, well, these cubes has a Fred Lynn or a Dwight Evans in it. Drummond. Radinsky. Sandy Alomar Jr. traded. Eric Gunderson. It's a Carney Lansford, 82. That's pretty cool. This is a Brigham's. What is Brigham's? 
Does anybody have a Brigham's around them or remember a Brigham's? Is that a department store? An ice cream shop? Carney Lansford Coca Cola Brigham's. It's pretty cool. I love oddball cards. Matt Kessel made millions when he took over Brady. Getting hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Brady got hurt that year. That was like the the last time that the uh, Patriots didn't win the uh, division. Bill Long. Rondell White. But see, I mean, your argument for that is, uh, you know, yeah, we're talking about Shady Brady. <laughs> he could win a Super Bowl in that system. <laughs> so you're saying that if Brady goes to another team, which I doubt it. I mean, Brady's going to be a Patriot, or he's going to, or he's going to retire. Um, so you think that no matter who they draft to replace Brady, is going to succeed, regardless? You think you think you could put Jameis Winston up there in that system, and he'd be good? This is Dale Murphy. It's pretty cool. The Gary Gaetti Fleer Record Setters. Here's a Klesko Reggie Sanders card from Final Edition. Some cool cards in here. Some sets I ain't seen in a while. Ken Phelps. Tim Layana. And Bob Scanlon. But if it's the system, how come, what's his name, the offensive coordinator isn't head coaching somewhere? I mean, Belichick's a, not an offensive guy. He's a defensive guy. Tom Hankey. He's a Pete Vukovic. You might remember him from Major League. He has been twice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, if it's just the system, why can't the system be translated anywhere else? Howard Johnson. You know, that happened in college football with the spread. You know, Fred McGriff. The Roger Clemens Classic. Steve Wilson. We got a Mike Lacoste. I'm in a bit of a juxtaposition here because I'm ripping open baseball and I'm talking football. That's <laughs> uh, because of Super Bowls in two days. Because there's only one Belichick. It's Belichick's system. Right, but is it Belichick's offensive system? Or are you saying it's like his coaching system? Like the way he runs practices and all that. We got Mel Hall. We got Reggie... Reggie Taylor. Yuck, Kent Herbeck. Yuck. We got Les Lancaster. Yeah, the 90 Donner. I think gonna be nothing good in this. Charlie Huff. There's Alan Trammell. Hall of Famer. Mike Kingery. We got Tyler Houston. Grimsley. Edgar Diaz. So let me let me toss this counter argument. Let's say Brady never gets drafted by New England. Let's say Brady gets drafted by the Miami Dolphins. Would the Patriots go on that almost a two-decade run without Brady? Who's the best pitcher in baseball right now? Um, that's a tough one. Uh, for consistency, I'd have to go with Scherzer. Because, I mean, Scherzer does it year in and year out. And he's pretty good. Um, Strasburg showed out in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree, OPG. I don't think it's all one person. Um, I think it's a mixture of the two. <laughs> yeah, I would probably say Max Scherzer is probably one of the best in baseball right now as far as consistency.
Verlander's really good. Cole's really good. Um, but, you know, like, when is Verlander going to fall off the cliff? DeGrom. <laughs> yeah, I mean, DeGrom's good. It's just, you know, he's got to do it for a few more years. He's got to do it for a few more years. Is it Dawson, the Hawk? Hall of Famer. Terry Poole. Kevin Mitchell. Jack Howe. Wild Thing Mitch Williams. Doc Gooden. We got Paul Gibson. Jeff Ballard. Jeff Schaefer. Yeah, he's got two Cy Youngs in a row. But, I mean, how many Scherzer got? <laughs> and Scherzer was right there in the running with him. Pagnazzi. Greg Harris. And this is from a Braves fan. I'm not praising Scherzer because I'm a Nats fan. Earl Hershiser. Felix Jose is just so bright. Todd Benzinger and a Tyler Saladino. Tyler Saladino. So as far as the cube was concerned, that wasn't that great. Did get a few Hall of Famers in there. A couple other cool little cards. We're going to open those packs next, see what we got. And he lost what? He lost the, the Cy Young voting for two years? But that's what I'm saying. When I when I look at pitching, I look at consistency. You know, you can't go by just the two-year stretch. DeGrom's good. Don't get me wrong. DeGrom, DeGrom's real good. If DeGrom wins a couple more Cy Youngs, I can say he's the best pitcher in the, in the league. But DeGrom's total resume hasn't reached Scherzer's yet. Let's see if we get in this Fleer Ultra. What's up, Chad Thompson? How you doing? Welcome to the stream. Man, these Fleer Ultra Packs are hard to open. It's like the glue really sits up as it sits for almost 30 years. Our sticker is Brew Crew. Shout out to Shakrat. Two point six six ERA. Yeah, that's pretty good. Jim Eisenreich is Ozzy Smith, Hall of Famer. Mackie Sassa, Mike Fitzgerald, Bob Guerin, Bobby Bo, Jose De Leon, Roger McDowell, Bobby Witt. Tim Wallach, Harold Reynolds, Big Mac, and Frank Viola. All right, we'll see what we get in this uh, Series 1. Yeah, I mean, over five years, that's good. But like I said, <laughs> he hasn't reached the resume of uh, Scherzer yet. So until Scherzer slows down, I'm not ready to... Called Degrom, even the best in the uh, you know. What's up, Big Harv? How you doing, bud? Hey, Big Harv. Stream must have knew you were coming because we pulled a Big Mac. We're just here debating football and baseball. James trying to convince me that Degrom has surpassed Scherzer. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm buying it yet. We got a Wilson Contreras, Cameron Rupp, Billy Hamilton. That's a cool picture. It says "Oi." Zach Davies, the belly. There's a Ender Inciarte Fielding Award. Brett Gardner. We got a uh, Jordy Mercer. We got Aldemus Diaz. Jarrell Cotton, Manny Machado, the Cespedes, and a Skirty card. Skirty. All right. So nothing really going out of there. I was trying to see if this was a parallel of any sort. 
Not seeing any short prints or nothing like that. All right, yeah, that was the Fairfield box. Let me turn my autofocus back on so you're not staring at a blurry Warren Spawn. No way I was putting that T-Sense in. <laughs> yeah, James, I mean, you're a Mets fan. I'm a, I'm a Braves fan, so we're going to go back and forth on this. At least I didn't say Soroka. <laughs> Looking to pick up the big Harv Ricky card? Where's my big Harv card? I got a big Harv card. That's a big Harv card. Autographed. Future Stars. Doesn't have the rookie logo on it because it was printed in the 80s. Of course, Mr. DFD. Spidey, Scotty Arrhenia. I also got the autographed Boutte Duck. Wicked Discounts. Signed as Boutte. Wanted. <laughs> so really not a whole lot going in that Fairfield. I'll go do a recap of some of the better cards we had out of there. Those are just all the ultras. Rookie, <laughs> rookie first off the line. You Dawson, Trammell, Clemens, McGriff, Murph. Got this Carney Lansford. Up here it says Brigham's. If anybody knows what a Brigham's is, let me know. Because I don't know what a Brigham's is. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see uh, Ian Anderson come up. I'm hoping Kyle Wright can get his stuff together and actually, like, be a, you know, back-end rotation guy. Because he's got the ability, he just can't put it together in the majors, at least yet. But that's the thing with pitchers, though, you know. Pitchers usually take a, a year or two to really get going. And Ozzy. Carney could smash it. Yeah, Carney Lansford put up some good numbers. But I'm just wondering what Brigham's is. <laughs> Was that a store? Talks about Coca-Cola on the back. Because they use a logo, but not Brigham's. Alright, I'll leave it at that. So, a uh, quick reminder, everybody, I will be live tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Time for my Bargain Buster Group break number nine. There's still four slots open. Whether those fill or not, still going to break it. Um, if you're interested, just head to thecardobvious.com. That's where I sell them from. If not, if, you know, you could just definitely come out in the stream, hang out, talk some baseball. James, you can show up tomorrow if you want to bring up DeGrom again. <laughs> Even though I'm not sure it convinced me at the time. <laughs> no, Peachy, definitely stop by in the morning if you can, bud. It was good seeing you. Anybody got any big plans for this weekend? Besides watching the Super Bowl? I think I'm more excited probably just to eat some chicken wings than I am watching the Super Bowl. <laughs> I'm actually interested in watching the XFL. The Mets signed Matt Adams. Bat Adams. Matt Adams is a decent pitch hitter. You don't want to bring him in like if you need a single. <laughs> but, you know, if a solo home run tie of the game, shoot. Bring Matt, Matt, Matt Adams in and let him swing for the fences. Brigham's was ice cream. Big Harv, thank you. <laughs> I was wondering what Brigham's was. I was like, is it an apartment store? Is it ice cream? Jeff Airtime. What'd you miss? You just missed me ripping a Fairfield. A cube. That's all you missed. Fairfield Fanatic Friday live stream. I've been on for 30 minutes or to Fairfield. You know what? Since I'm doing this live, it's a special occasion. Let me go get another one.
I'm having fun. Let's get another Fairfield. Slav says he's avoiding watching the Super Bowl. <laughs> James said we got Alonzo. We're good. <laughs> I did not get an Alonzo, James. I wish I did. That would have been nice. Uh, let's see. Did y'all hear some uh, WWE shareholders are suing Vince McMahon because he's using their money on the XFL? Well, I mean... Eh, eh that's that's kind of a weak argument for the shareholders. They're investing in WWE, the, the company. The XFL is a company decision. I wouldn't say they're really suing. I mean, if they really, really didn't like the idea of the XFL, they could just sell their shares. I mean, that's the way the stock market works, right? Uh, I think Brigham's was only in the Northeast. Hmm. Jeff Airtime, you ever heard of Brigham's Ice Cream? Yes, I did in 28 minutes, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> uh, yeah, he is a billionaire. Looking forward to the wings. It is his money. WWE stock went down a lot. Well, I doubt it's going to put WWE out of business. I think they'll be just fine. They did it, they did it last time, and it was a gigantic failure. And WWE didn't miss a beat. Just kept on rolling. Alright, let's do one more Fairfield. And let's keep on chatting sports and other stuff. Because we got Jeff Airtime in the house. Bringing us some breaking news. Leaking stuff like Mike Trout using PEDs and stuff. <laughs> You are familiar with Brigham Ice Cream? Oh, okay. No, because I pulled a card. It was an 82 Tops card. But it had a Brigham's logo on it. And I didn't even know what Brigham's was. I didn't know if it was a department store or what. And Big Harv said, it's an ice cream place, but he believes they're only in the Northeast. That's why I specifically asked you. Because I know you're in that area. <clears throat> Should have kept the stubs to your XFL season tickets. Well, Slobs, it's, uh, you know, Kobe, you know, he was a basketball player, but he was also a cultural figure. Um, I did a video talking about that, you know, and why is this one stuck together like this? What's going on in here? Um, but yeah, Kobe was far more than just a basketball player. Um, cause I said, I mentioned that, no, there was not an auto in the first Fairfield. It was not no auto, fortunately. Just a pack of Fleer Ultra, I'm like probably gonna get out of this one. Trying not to slice myself open, trying to pry this thing open. There we go. I think that's some purchase. Uh, but as I was saying, Slaw, that the cultural significance of Kobe Bryant is that a lot of people that don't even follow sports knew who he was. Um, like I said, when I was, I was talking to my mom and I asked her about, you know, do you know who Kobe Bryant is? David Justice here on the front. And uh, <laughs> I probably do need safety scissor slobs. <laughs> and she knew who he was. And this is a seven-year-old woman that doesn't know anything about sports. She only knows Tom Brady, apparently Kobe Bryant, and Rob Gronkowski. But, you know, she's never said it, but I think she has a crust on Rob Gronkowski. <laughs> Yeah, 
I understand that, Chad, you know, being a Hornets fan. But, I mean, the Hornets drafted him knowing farewell they were going to straight up trade him to the Lakers. There's a Miguel Sano rookie. That's pretty solid. I like Sano. <laughs> Big Harp says he has a crush on Gronk. So, same packs as the last one. Fleer Ultra and Series 1. I think all my cubes that I have right now are going to be Fleer Ultra and Series 1. 2018 Series 1. All right, let's do the focus thing again. So no, we had David Justice ninety one, Paulo Orlando, Rafael Ramirez got a Steve Avery rookie from traded. So James said earlier, uh, what he's hoping for most at the Super Bowl is a wardrobe malfunction at halftime. Dang, all these are backwards. All right, Slobs, so drop save, man. Will to throw Clark. Uh, you got a Justice Auto. That's awesome. What's up, Deafness? How you doing today? If I'm starting a team tomorrow, who do I want for my tight end? Kelsey or Kittle? Uh, hmm. Kittle. I like Kittle. Kittle's more old school. He's, he's more of the old school tight end. I like Kittle. We got Frankie Rodriguez. Here's a cow. Cal Ripken Jr. Hall of Famer. Roberto Kelly. James says it depends on who the QB is. That is true, James. Do you have a QB that can sling it downfield? Then maybe you do go Kelsey. There's a Gary Carter score. Another Hall of Famer. This box already turning out better than the last one. Hassie. Yeah, Kittle. I like Kittle. He's more, more of the old school tight end. Rather than a big bodied receiver. Claudette Washington. Ed Sprague. Tom Goodwin. The BJ Surhoff. This man once hit a cycle. It's for the cycle when he was a brave. Remember that? Joe McGrain. Domingo Ramos. And Ken Patterson. Gary Carter as a giant might be a super short print. Yeah, right? Just doesn't look right. I mean, Gary Carter played for a lot of teams, but you don't think of him with the Giants. <laughs> it's like getting a no more on the A's. Uh, oh, man. It's more 90 Donruss, and it's all dinged up, too. I'm not even going to look at the Donruss, really. There's really nothing you're going to get in that. All right, what's this? Kevin Millwood. Really, Upper Deck, you think you could get a better pitcher of Kevin Millwood than him batting? And not only batting, but like getting jammed so badly on a ball? <laughs> What's up, Ardar? How you doing? McGrain's daughter was good on American Idol. You know what, Jeff? I did not even know McGrain's daughter was on American Idol. I get a paper cut to Macintosh. Jeff Reardon. Eric Karos, Randy Milligan, uh, I can't get over that Millwood card, Steve Farr, <laughs> Brian Hunter, there's the Murph, the big old print spot on this side, Leaf, there we go, turn back the clock, Sandy Koufax, Hall of Famer, Scott Kuba, Don Robinson, Cecil Fielder, and the best card of them all, 1990 Tops Checklist. It's not even in numerical order. It's in team order. All right, let's go through the next bit.
All right, since uh, Hard R and Jeff Airtime are in the chat, and I know y'all are wrestling fans, who is the best modern wrestler? And when I say modern wrestler, a wrestler that has only been in the spotlight the past two years. I don't want y'all naming some old people like Jericho, Undertaker, and stuff like that. I want y'all to name somebody new, because I haven't watched wrestling in forever. So who's the wrestlers to look out for? Bray Wyatt. Never even heard of them. Now I have to look up Bray Wyatt. Kiki Jones. Reggie Jefferson. Kenny Omega. Steve Shitron. Jeff Aritone says he doesn't know modern. <laughs> oh, what's up, Card... What is that, Card Cards? What's up, man? We got Jose Lean. We got Kirby Puckett. That's right. The Walrus, Doug Jones. Dream Team. We got an Andre Dawson. I got this exact same card in another Fairfield. Top Prospects Checklist. Kind of hard to read. Let's see who's on this. Todd Van Poppel. Chipper. Royce Clayton. Rico Bronia. Reggie Sanders, Lieberthal, Musina's on here. Adam Cole as well. Yeah, I'm going to look up these wrestlers because, uh, like I said, I haven't watched wrestling in forever. There's Bo Jackson. Henry Cotto. Steve Sex. Walt Terrell. Alistair Black, Finn Baylor, Corey Snyder. All these WWE guys, look at this. Look at this. This is... <laughs> I mentioned this about Fairfield before. But why? Why even put this in there? You know, I realize I'm getting cheap cards in a Fairfield. But this isn't a cheap card. This is garbage. Look at all the paper loss on that. <laughs> it looks like it's raining. <laughs> Uh, 91 Fleer. Cover your eyes. And Jeff Brantley. WWE, AEW, NXT. I think I watched a bit of... Uh... No, it wasn't NXT. I think it was AEW. I think I watched a bit of a rerun the other day. It was pretty interesting. Is that the one that Chris Jericho is in? The AEW? They, they bring back a bunch of older wrestlers. All right, Jeff Bagwell, nice, Hall of Famer. Mark Grace, great player, not a Hall of Famer. Jeff Reed. Terry Mulholland. Todd Hunley. Al Padrique. We had Jody Davis. You, Jody. Here's a Yankees team car. This is 2004. I'm not sure they were. They didn't win the World Series that year. That was the year that uh. No, that wasn't the year that Boston wasn't was it? Chris Brown. Roberto Hernandez went to college right down the road from where I live. A Robin Ventura Stadium Club. We got some '80s tops here. Larry Heil, Jim Kern, Matt Trainer. Franklin Nunez. And the Eck, Dennis Eckersley, 87. Another Hall of Famer. Jericho is AEW. Gave NXT. How do you pronounce that? You say next? A shot. Didn't know anybody. It's funny how the AEW champion and the number one contender is ex WWE. So you got your first pack, Jeff Airtime? Man, you're old. Just mess with you. <laughs> Steve Murrah. Who <laughs> say leaned? Mike Jeffcoat. Phil Bradley. 
Rupert Jones, Mike Griffin, Dan Quisenberry, Tim Corcoran, Dwayne Henry, John Moses, Kelly Downs, Mickey Tettleton, Terry Steinbeck. All right, Chad, appreciate you stopping in. And, uh, I'll be live on tomorrow if you want to jump in again. Manny Trio, Carl Nichols, Glenn Braggs, Paul O'Neill, Mark Lee. It's a great, great, great picture of the 80s, the early 80s. Got the 70s hair. Got the 80s glasses. Got the 70s, 80s stash. What's up, Scotty? You doing, bud? Bob Forsh and John Farrell. The pay-per-views are way better than anything the main WWE roster is doing. All right, got another Mike Piazza here. Heritage, got this exact same Heritage card. And this exact same Schilling. And this exact same Roger Clemens. <laughs> uh, the bashing years, Mark McGuire. I need to quit buying these cubes because I bought these cubes off of the Five Below site. So it's like, I'm guessing they all came out of the same case and like cards from the same case. Apparently have a lot of repeat cards in them. The Viscaino. Josh Reddick, Starling Castro, <laughs> oh, Spidey, and Wayno, Adam Wainwright, one of the worst trades the Braves ever did, Adam Wainwright, traded him for J.D. Drew, he's part of the J.D. Drew trade. True Wrestling NXT is the best, but I think I just like all the crap stories nowadays. <laughs> Alright, let's see if I can open this Fleer Ultra without having to cut it. Uh, nope. Fleer Ultra used the glue of the millennium. Man, got some bombers in here today. Hard R, Big Harv, Jeff Airtime, now Spidey. We got Brewers again. No. <laughs> That's the Mariners, ain't it? Was that him? That's the Mariners, ain't it? The old Mariners. Pedro. Hojo. Marquise. Barfield. J Bell. Kendo. Hayes. Ruben Boyd should be a Hall of Famer. Omar Vizquel, Bob Welch, Dave Magadan, Mookie Wilson, and Steve Shitrin. That pack was bleh. With Omar being the best one. I'm going to hold on to Omar. The Woo Box. I need to start watching wrestling just so I can answer Airtime's question, wrestling question. We got Cakes, Jorge Polanco, Eduardo Nunez, Luis Santos Ricky, Dominic Smith Ricky, Orlando Arcia, Legends in the Making Robinson Cano, Garrett Cooper Ricky. Joey Gallo, League Leaders. Viscale should be a Hall of Famer, Jeff Airtime. Carlos Rodon. Starling Marte. John Lackey. Come on, Jeff. Why is Ozzie Smith in the Hall of Fame? Is it for defense?
Fozzie Smith's in the Hall of Fame for defense. He should be in the Hall of Fame for defense. Yeah, let me turn my autofocus back off. <laughs> Big R said, apparently I need to watch sports that are not only the Olympics. <laughs> Those are the only questions you get right. Ozzy is in for showmanship. So Ozzy is in just because he did a backflip every time he ran out on the field. <laughs> so Spidey says. You can't, <laughs> I just said, you can't, I can't type that fast to argue. Fine, Jeff, we can get on stream, StreamYard, and you can argue with me why Viscal does not belong in the Hall of Fame. And if I agree with you, you have to agree that Ozzy Smith doesn't belong in the Hall of Fame. And then we could both agree that Harold Baines doesn't belong. Compiler. <laughs> yeah, but but when you're good at defense, you don't need to compile defensive stats. I mean, that just passes the eye test. Viscale was a great shortstop. He was a great defensive shortstop and did it for a long time. And that can pass the eye test, eye test without even taking any numbers. The only thing that's compiled is... You know, hits. Yeah, Tommy John pitched a lot of years. Brandon Phillips going to the hall as a second baseman. Mm, I don't know if Brandon Phillips compiled enough numbers. He hasn't. He hasn't even reached compiler status. Yeah, Ray Adornez was a great defensive shortstop. Really good. Mordania is really good defensive shortstop. <laughs> is that how you're going to disagree with me, Jeff? You're just going to thumb down my uh, my stream. <laughs> so how about this, Jeff? We'll, we'll hit a compromise here. We'll say if you're great defensively and a great compiler of stats... Are you Hall of Fame worthy? <laughs> yeah, I mean, once uh, once the the steroid users get in, and the steroid users are going to get in, um, I don't think they're going to keep Bonds and Clemens out. I really don't. Um, maybe on their last year of the ballot. Then that opens the gate for quite a few people to get in. Including A-Rod. Because if you let Bonds in. And you let Clemens in. Then. I mean. Generally speaking you should let A-Rod in pretty early. But if you want to continue the punishment of PED users by saying, hey, you're going to have to wait 10 years before you get in, then that could be a thing too. I don't know. Maybe the writers will make that a thing. Maybe A-Rod won't get in until their ninth, 10th year on the ballot. Yeah, that's true. Actually, uh, Jeff, I was actually giving this some thought because... I'm pushing close to, what, like 450 subscribers. I'm thinking for my 500 uh, subscriber contest, I'm going to... My contest is probably going to be pick somebody that you think belongs in the Hall of Fame, but it's an unpopular opinion, and convince me of it. That is true, Jeff. There are already PED users in there. But the one caveat is it can't be a PED user... 
and that's the only reason they're not getting the Hall of Fame. He was not the best shortstop in the league while he played. Uh, let's see. But he played for such a long time. <laughs> so there had to have been a rage of shortstops better than him. Like, I would say Ordonez was probably better than him defensively during those years. And that was at the back end of Ozzy's career. That wasn't even 80s Ozzy. That was late 90s Ozzy that was, wasn't as uh, athletic as he used to be. But yeah, I think I'm going to make that my 500 sub contest. Is, uh, make a video explaining to me why so-and-so should be in the Hall of Fame. And it can't be because uh, they're being held out for PED use. can't be that. Like people like Clemens and... and uh, Barry and Raphael Palmero aren't getting in because, you know, they're PD use. But it could be anybody else, like somebody like Viscale or Tommy John or Dale Murphy. I mean, Ted Simmons got in. Wasn't Ted Simmons a compiler? But I think a lot of times we're talking about two different things because you're talking about writers voting and then you're talking about veterans committees. What were his numbers his first few years? Well, this is ultra, so it only gives us uh, 1990. This is early Viscale. Uh, let's see. He hit 247. Hit two home runs. 18 RBI, stole four bases. Only struck out 22 times. But that was in like half a season. What's up, Thrice-a-Roni? Even more bombers coming in here. How you doing, bud? Are you mentally preparing yourself for the big game, Thrice? <laughs> Stupid ultra. <laughs> Thrice, are you meditating and getting some zen about you before the big game tomorrow? I know you're probably nervous being a Chiefs fan. I'm a Dolphins fan. I don't know what it feels like for any team to be in a Super Bowl. So, like, if the Dolphins were in a Super Bowl, I would be, like, extremely nervous. <laughs> for no reason. Andre Dawson, Puckett. Thought I had a trammel card in here. Could look at Trammell's stats. He's in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. Thrice, uh, who we were pulling for in the um, in the Super Bowl. Since I'm like not a fan of either team, and I think I'm gonna pull for the Chiefs because I just still have this dislike for the 49ers since the 1980s. Back in the 80s, I really hated the 49ers. And I didn't like the Chiefs back then either, really. I mean, y'all had like DeBerg and uh, Christian Okoye. Christian Okoye was awesome. The Nigerian Nightmare, he was cool. Like, I never was a big Kansas City fan, but they always had cool players that went on through there. Yeah, Jeff, are you doing, uh, you doing trivia this Sunday? Brady was on the local radio show yesterday making his rounds. Philly still has a love-hate relationship with him. Uh Red. Reed. So why does Philly hate Reed so much? Because he couldn't win the big game? I mean, Andy Reed's a good coach. He's a likable guy, too, for the most part. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the leftover landing spot. Uh, Montana went to the Chiefs. Marcus Allen went to the Chiefs. All Super Bowl questions and one wrestling question. Uh-oh. 
It's going to be all foosball. That's right up Phil Guy's alley, Jeff. I'm okay with football sometimes. I'm not going to give any sport score predictions on the game tomorrow because uh, I don't know. Does a high-scoring game favor the Chiefs? Does a low-scoring game favor the Niners? You would imagine. Also, I'm pretty sure there's uh, any prop bet predictions. <laughs> no scoring or betting predictions. Nope, nope, nope. Not for me. I am terrible at predicting uh, the outcome of sporting events. So I don't gamble on them. I especially never ever gamble on a team that I have personal invested interest in. As a team I root for. Because that just makes your high higher and your low lower. Because if you bet on your own team and you win, and you win some money, you're like, yeah, that's awesome. Woo, top of the world. But if your team loses, and you lose money, that's just, you know, rubbing dirt in the wound. 27-24 Chiefs. James said he isn't scared. Steve Bono, Elvis Gerback, Alex Smith. Elvis Gerbeck. I forgot Elvis Gerbeck played for the 49ers. What's up, Henzo32? How you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, we're just in here shooting the breeze. Talking about some foosball. Opened up a couple fair fields. Really didn't get much. But it did lead into a conversation about whether Omar Fiskel belongs in the Hall of Fame. But we're talking football now. I'm looking for score predictions. Who's got score predictions? I want to see them in the chat. Because I'm not going to give one. But I'd like to see y'all's. Enzo says Chiefs 35-25. to 10 point game. James has it close. 27-24 Chiefs. Did I say 25? 27-24. <laughs> How are you getting 25? How are the Chiefs getting 25? <laughs> Enzo says it's Friday. It ain't time for math. <laughs> Oh, Big Harv says 31-24. Doesn't give the teams. That's just going to be the score. <laughs> Flip-flop it as you please. Big Harv, I'm interested. Since you like those Bay Area teams, uh, are you pulling for the Niners? Scotty says 31-21. The Jets aren't playing in the Super Bowl, Spidey. <laughs> Big R says, yeah, he is pulling for the 49ers. Awesome. I don't blame you. I mean, I live in Georgia. I pulled for the Falcons when they played the Patriots. But, of course, that wasn't hard because everybody pulls against the Patriots anyways, right? No matter who they're playing. I just happened to pick up this Fred McGriff car. Look how off-cut it is. That's the back of it. Front's fine. <laughs> Back's pretty off-cut. Gotta love the 80s.
Only on the outside. You live in a San Fran house. You just want a good game. I hear you. Jeff, if you're still in the uh in the chat, here's Ozzy's numbers. Career two fifty six up at this point, ninety. Camera wanted to quit focusing on it. Nineteen home runs up to that point. <laughs> I don't think I have another Viscal card in here. We can look at stats. Here's a Trammel. That's early. 90 Trammel. Uh oh, Big Harv throwing down the tough questions. Eighty career home runs. How many did uh, Ozzy finish? Uh, Ozzy finish with? Yeah, yeah, transformative athlete. I get that, Jeff. I want to turn into a Google Fest. <laughs> it wouldn't be a Google Fest if Big Harv was there because Big Harv gave him all right. Ozzy had 28 home runs in his career. That's actually pretty good. I thought he had less. Raphael Belliard had two. He was a good defensive shortstop. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I used to love Raphael Belliard on the old Braves teams. They just bring him in the late innings to play defense. Because they wanted Blouser's bat in there for the first eight innings. And they wanted uh, Bell Yard's defense in there for the last few. How many years did Omar play? 56? It's quite a few. Played 24 seasons. It's wild. Quarter century. Ozzy would not be in the hollow decent with his offensive numbers. Ouch, big arv. Yeah, I mean the hall is becoming more and more a defense or offensive uh, offensive place. Okay, so real quick, let's see, we got nine people. I got nine people showing in the chat. Real quick, last question of the day, and then I'll let you get on with your Fridays. Uh DH for the NL. Yay or nay? And Julio Franco, the snowman, as well as Butte, the duck, as well as the Jeff Slurp Time Hippo are all watching your answers. James says, yes. Get Cano off the field. <laughs> Big Harv goes with a soft answer. It happens eventually. So I'm guessing I'm putting that, that, that down as a yes. Don't like it, but it will happen maybe as soon as next year. Spidey says, no way. Is that no way, Spidey, as in the NL will never let it happen, or no way you don't want you don't want it to happen? Enso says, I hope not. I mean, it's they're talking about it pretty seriously recently, like, you know, it's, it, it could be soon, sooner than later. It happens before Manfred retires. 
Yeah, I think it's it, it would happen before the new collective bargaining agreement. I agree with that. So, my thoughts is I love the NL style of play. I do. I really do. That pitching spot uh, really makes a difference in strategy and setting up your lineups and double switches and all that. I do like that part of the game. But from a business standpoint of selling the game and trying to bring people into the seats and trying to, you know, make money for these teams, I understand it. You know, offense brings in the people. Chicks dig the long ball. That's what, you know, you promote offense and you're hopefully promoting the excitement of the game. You know, I don't know. I mean, that's just the way I see it. I'm, I'm kind of like on the fence with it, you know. As somebody that enjoys the strategy of thinking of when to bring in a pitcher, when to bring in a pinch hitter, I'm for it. But on the other hand, I'm for the growth of the game as well. It'll make you sad, Spidey. Yeah, I think I would be, I would be sad too. I would miss the, the strategy involved. Because, I mean, how many times have you seen before, like, an NL pinch hitter get announced and only take it out? They never got to they never got to hit. They never got to even to swing because uh, they were faked out by the other manager and brought in the wrong pinch hitter. You wouldn't see stuff like that no more. You wouldn't see no Bartola big sexy hitting home runs. Take it away in the AL also. Yeah, make them even. Sure, call me a purist. I, I I wish there was no DH. It does give older players an escape if their defense is non existent to play. Um, I agree with that. But it's you know, like I said, it's one sided for that. You know, that gives kind of the AL the advantage for signing older sluggers you know because they can sign them to longer contracts because they could just put them in the DH spot their defense you know slacks off too much but I am rambling so I think I'm going to let y'all go for the day um see I'm an hour and 12 minutes in it's a lot longer than I expected to stream what's up Steve how you doing bud I'm just getting ready to hop off man sorry my friend my MJ sticker. I got from that uh, basket pack. MJ's the man. But yeah, I'm going to hop off for the day. And um, definitely stop by tomorrow. 11 a.m. Eastern Time, I'll be doing the, the group break. Still got four slots open in that. Uh, definitely come hang out. BS some more about sports. Uh... You know, while we're ripping packs. Also going to do the giveaway stash uh, giveaway tomorrow, too. I do that live on stream as well. Um, appreciate y'all y'all stopping by. Thank you, Deafness, Enzo, James, Steve for stopping by. Spidey, Big Harv. It's a lot of fun talking to you. Phil Guy, if you happen to still be listening, thank you for stopping by. And, yeah, I'm out once I find the always awkward to find end stream button. Remember, y'all, you can only control your thoughts and your actions. Stay positive. Keep ripping them packs. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace.